Hi, this is Jason Mott, closer for the 2011 St. Louis Cardinals, and you're listening to WICR. Good morning, everyone. We are back for another installment of AM Sports with Sax, Matteo, and Edwards. Good morning, fellas. How are you doing? Doing very well, Ian. How about yourself? Uh, I'm uh, I'm doing uh, I'm I'm doing pretty well, Sean. Yeah, yeah, you're doing pretty well. I see you got the suit on and everything. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It, it, internship interview today, but uh, doing big things. But you know that that's not what we're here to talk about. We're here to talk some NBA. Some NBA. We've got we we've got the end of the regular season coming up within a week. The the finish line is is almost here. Time flies. And and we have to talk some playoff pictures. So we're going to be talking about the Eastern Conference here in segment one, and then the Western Conference in segment two. So, in the Eastern Conference, the top seven uh, seeds have been clinched, um, and that leaves the final eighth spot to, still up for grabs between the Atlanta Hawks and the New York Knicks. Both teams have four games left, and uh, the Hawks right now have a... Two game lead on the Knicks, and I mean, what are we thinking, fellas? Who's who's gonna take this eight spot? Uh, I, I'm gonna have to say Atlanta. Atlanta's gonna take this because the New York Knicks they would ha they have a harder schedule. they are four opponents. They play at Toronto. Well, actually, three opponents. They play Toronto twice. Well, they're four games. Four games. Oh yeah. So. So they they play in Toronto, then they play at home against the Bulls, then they travel to Brooklyn to play the Nets, and then they're they're home against then Toronto comes to the Garden. So all four of those teams combined, they have a five eighty win percentage. While the Hawks, they play at Brooklyn, then Miami comes to town, then Charlotte comes to town, and then Atlanta travels to Milwaukee. So those four teams combined it's a four eighty win percentage. So that being said, the numbers conclude that the Knicks have the harder schedule. So I'm going to have to go with Atlanta. Although I think New York's a better team and they would be more exciting to see in the playoffs, but Atlanta, Atlanta's going to sneak in. I mean, they would be more exciting to see. Quite frankly, to me, they don't even deserve it. But, yeah, when it comes down to it, their remaining schedule is against all 500 teams. And really, it's feasible for... Atlanta to pick up two out of those last four wins. I believe, what is it? They have Miami, they have Brooklyn, and I believe they have Charlotte and um, Milwaukee, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Charlotte and Milwaukee, they should win. I'm well, confident they should and win. And the way you have to look at this, too, the Knicks have to gain three games on them because the Atlanta has a tiebreaker. So Atlanta would have to go one and three. And the Knicks would have to go three and one, or the Knicks would have to go four and zero, oh, and Atlanta have to go zero oh and four. So it's not looking very favorable for the Knicks, uh, the Knicks sites right now. Yeah. Realistically, I think they might just. The only game I give them possibly is against Brooklyn. You know what? I could see That's them. I, I could see them going three and one possibly. I mean, they struggle with Toronto. They've they've been struggling with Toronto the last couple of years. I, I don't see them beating Chicago. And I, I honestly, I do see them being Brooklyn. They they absolutely destroyed Brooklyn. They played so well the last time these two teams played. But I don't, I don't see them sweeping Toronto. Well, first of all, first of all, I think that the Knicks they're definitely not going to go three and one. They have no chance of going three and one. They've been playing terribly. It's amazing that they're even still in the consideration for the playoffs. I mean, if you take a look at it, Atlanta right now, who's in the eighth spot in the Eastern Conference, would be 12 games out of the playoffs in the Western Conference. 12 games out! Neither one of these teams at all deserves to make the playoffs. But it is going to be Atlanta. The... Uh, even if it comes down to the final night of the regular season, they're going up against the Milwaukee Bucks, who are absolutely terrible, absolutely terrible at forty at fourteen and sixty-four. I mean, they've they've won they've won only one game in their last ten. So right there, I think all Atlanta has to do is is win one game. Win one game, and they are going to win one game against Milwaukee. Right. I they, have them losing to Sh Miami and Charlotte, and Brooklyn are going to beat them. 
because those teams are moving up. Charlotte's trying to gain Washington, and Miami's fighting with Indiana, and Brooklyn's trying to catch Toronto. So Ch Charlotte did catch Washington. Yeah, they're, they're tied they're now. Tied right now. Yeah, but they're gonna go back and forth for that six and five seed. So we'll yeah. see. And the Knicks do not ha do not have any game that I really see them winning. I mean, you know, may maybe they sneak one against Toronto. Maybe they sneak one there. I I see that the the Bulls are too sound defensively. Um, you know, the, the, they'll they'll shut down the Knicks. They'll have Jr. They'll let Jr. Smith take forty five shots, and you know maybe he'll make like ten of them. Um, so I, I think that uh, you know the, the Knicks are not going to match up favorably there. And Brooklyn, yes, they destroyed them, uh, you know, a few weeks ago, but the Nets are just playing at, at such a such a high level recently. I think that they're 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 quite possibly the sleeper team in the Eastern Conference. I really like the way that they're playing. They're, you yeah, know, absolutely. They're, I, I, don't, I don't see that because Brooklyn, they're they're too small. They they can't rebound the ball. And in the series against the Heat or the pa not the Heat, they can match up with the Heat. But the Pacers, the Pacers will out rebound them. And even Chicago, they would destroy them in the paint. Looking f looking as Miles Plumsley, Mason Plumley being your uh, your best rebounder. That's and in a rookie, that's not saying playoff basketball. Right, but who are the – yeah, who else is it going to be in the Eastern Conference? All right, so fine. They, they match up well against Miami. That yeah. could be – that mm -hmm. could that could be a – They sec swept Miami. Exactly. That could be a second-round matchup. Mm -hmm. Now, do I think that they're going to beat Miami in the playoffs? No. Mm -hmm. No, me either. No. No, Miami Miami's going to take that series. It's definitely going to come down to Indiana and, um, and Miami in, in the East. Uh, so – what, the Nets are fifth seed right now, right? Right now, the Brooklyn Nets no, six. are Not sitting that. in the five seed. Uh -huh. they, really, the Nets aren't going to move anywhere. They're three games behind Chicago so, and Toronto for the four, for the three and four seeds, <laughs> and three games ahead of Charlotte and Washington. the The Nets are practically locked into that five. So spot. right now, they would play Chicago in the first round. I have Chicago is going to beat the Nets. Well, Chicago or Toronto. They, well, Toronto would be a good matchup for them, but Chicago, no chance. How far are Chicago and Toronto from each other? They're tied. They're, they're tied right now. Oh, they're tied. It okay. would depend on their remaining schedule. I, which. I, I think, I think even if no matter who the Nets match up with, they're gonna win their first round. Serious. Not against Chicago. I don't believe against Chicago either. I'll give. I them like Chica realistic. Chicago's my sleeper team out there. Yeah, make Tom noise. Thibodeau knows how to make noise in the playoffs. Oh, absolutely. He's yeah. he's a great coach. Joakim Noah, coach. Joe Noah should be in play, in uh, MVP consideration. I know his numbers are not like, but but he's averaging like six assists a game, ten boards, thirteen points a game. That's what he's doing for that team is something really special, and he's putting them in that predicament that they're in right now. So. I'm not taking anything away from Chicago. Yeah. I love the way Tom Thibodeau coaches. They're such a sound defensive team, but I think that the Nets are just—they're just coming together. Something about them is just—is just saying to me that they're going to put a run together come playoff time. Now it's possible that they might have to—they'll probably have to go against Miami or Indiana in the second round, most likely. But um, I just think that that the the Nets are a dangerous team to watch out for. They are. Yeah, the, only, the only thing, yeah, is the questioning that questions me is their defense and their rebounding. They can score at will. They have scores everywhere. Yeah, they have, they can score at will. It's just defensive rebounds and whatnot. Basically, like you have what Mason Plumley, KG's back with KG's and really KG has, K KG's, KG's done though. He's yeah. averaging six boards a yeah. game this year. He's not K KG's not KG. Brook Lopez would be. If now having Brooke yeah, Lopez having in there and that's a run, they, they could fare well with people. They'd be the three seed without a doubt. Oh, yeah. If they had Brooke Lopez, they would absolutely be the three seed. Yeah, definitely. Because then they would have a big man presence down low. And then they would match up even more. Well, even with even, Chicago, they could match up then. They, they'd match up even more favorably with Miami then. They'd have an even bigger advantage down low. Oh, they would be Miami in the series if they had Brooke Lopez. I'll go on the limb and say that. Okay. I. 
I I still wouldn't put them over Miami. I mean Miami, yeah, you know, got Miami's got the uh, got got the playoff experience, and I mean, yeah, you know, it, it's it's one thing to to beat a team, you know, four and zero in the in the regular season, but come playoff time, the Heat are just gonna turn it up, and yeah, it, it's it's gonna be Miami and Indiana. Yeah, like really, all, you can you can say all you want about Miami. You know who you have to watch out about strictly April, May, and June, but it's it's true, it's true. When when they when those when that time comes around, I don't know what it is. Like Miami may look down, but certainly they proved they proved people otherwise. You know how many times I threw them under the bus and came back to haunt me. Hey Ray Allen for that though. The team I would watch out for playing in the first round. They've been really hot since the beginning of January. Besides the Nets, is the Charlotte Bobcats. And the Charlotte Bobcats play Miami really tough in the regular season. And Al Jefferson, that, that team's big, and they play defense. And with Kemba Walker, they can score. So, that, I mean, they're inexperienced, but Michael Jordan being the the, the head guy in that organization, I'm telling you, I think the Bobcats could battle someone out seven games in the first round. Especially Indiana. Indiana is not. They have so many. They're they're, they're plateauing in all aspects. Well, I mean, well, they, they might not get Indiana in the first round. I mean, right right now they're they're sitting in in the sixth seed, and they would be match up with Toronto. Toronto. It's, a, it's a good matchup. Yeah, I, I I give the edge to Toronto. But uh, anyway, so all all four all three of us are saying uh, Atlanta. Gets yeah. it over the Knicks. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Unfortunately, yeah. Do they do they win a game in no. the first round? Oh no no no. No they, chance. The Knicks have a better chance of winning a playoff it, it, game. It honestly would depend if uh, the Heat or the Pacers were to make it. I think if the Pacers would get the first seed, I think Atlanta might win one at best, maybe. But if the Heat not sweep. I I I don't, I don't, I don't see it either. I, I, I think they're gonna sweep. I, I, I see regardless. There, there's swept. there's there's no chance. That they wouldn't get. I don't even see them being it, Indiana and Miami. No chance. Double digit losses each game too. It wouldn't have a playoff feel. It'll be over at the third quarter. Mm. It'll be over at the third quarter. All four games. So anyway, mm. that's that's uh, that's all we have time for in the Eastern Conference. The Western Conference will be uh, coming up right after this break. Stick around for it. And I want to tell all you MassCom students at Iona. Stick with it. It's a wonderful program. You got great professors, great teachers. Feel the passion, because I'll tell you something. There's many, many people in our industry from from Iona, and Iona, it's all about the people, and MassCom is moving.